Hey guys, welcome to the Rookie Review here at Rookie Arcade. Today we're talking about Persona Dancing Endless Night Collection. Atlas recently polished an already phenomenal RPG and elevated it to a masterpiece with Persona 5 Royal. Joker and the band come back for a second round of ass kicking and school slaving. But have you thought what were heroes were up to when they were not fighting d monsters? Why are you running? Why are you running? One of the highlights of the Persona games are their soundtracks, so we're really excited to check this one out. I'm your host, Rockin' Wolf. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment below. So Persona Dancing Endless Night is a collection that includes three games. Persona 4 Dancing All Night, the first game in the spin-off series, and both sequels. Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, and Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. Being a spin-off, you can assume that the story here is going to be pretty light. Rhythm games usually focus heavily on gameplay over story or side content, and that is no different here. Persona 4 Dancing All Night does have an actual story mode. It plays out very much like a visual novel. Be prepared to do quite a bit of reading here. And make sure to only begin story mode when you are ready. If you want to casually play first, start free dance right away. The intro exposition takes a while even to just get you to the tutorial screen. Anyways, P4 takes place sometime after Persona 4 Golden. Risei, who is an idol, has invited our protagonist to join her in an idol concert. While practicing, they meet another idol and find out that her group has gone missing. This might be in connection to a mysteriously ghostly video going around, rumored to show some spooky dead idols. Investigating this leads you and our heroes to the Midnight Stage, a world where violence is not allowed and everything is settled through dance. Yes, that's right. Uh, honestly, the story is fine, and some of it is enjoyable, but there will be quite a bit of reading to do to get to the action, so keep that in mind. Also, the evil monster is a weird ribbon hentai thing. Persona 3 and Persona 5 play a little differently. Instead of visual novel story mode, we get a bite-sized visual novel story mode. It's now called Social. Here you'll see short interaction between two or more characters chit-chatting about, well, n nothing a lot of the time. The story here is a bit simpler as well. Taking place over the span of one night, these games pick up sometime after Persona 4 Dancing All Night. The trio of sisters, Elizabeth from Persona 3, and twins Caroline and Justine from Persona 5 hold a dance-off to see who has the better dancing friends. If Persona 4's story was light, this here is pure fluff. Be ready to become very familiar with the Velvet Room as well, as you'll be seeing this background a lot. Gameplay is fairly forward. Persona Dancing gives the player three face buttons on each side of the screen as well as a scratch ring for a total of seven different buttons the player has to look out for. Face buttons on each side of the screen corresponds with the PS4 controller buttons. So on the left, up, left, and down. And on the right, triangle, circle, and cross. The scratch ring is in the middle. It is activated using the left or right analog sticks by quickly tilting one of them in any direction when the prompt for the scratch ring appears. Notes come from the center of the screen and you simply have to time the buttons to the prompt on the screen. During the song, there may be times that Fever Time activates if you're doing well enough, in which another character will join you in the dance. Honestly, it's pretty easy stuff here. The game is pretty fun and uses this mechanic to create interesting patterns for the player to follow, requiring quite a bit of coordination as well. Besides the story or social modes and the free dance modes, there isn't much else to do here regarding side content. You can watch some perfect plays, as well as watching the choreography of the songs. In Persona 3 and Persona 5, you're also able to explore the character's room and use VR to creepily check out your favorite character's private belongings in first person. Wait, is that a... is that a Diglett? For the most part, majority of the game's flaws are not because of the gameplay, even though there are a couple which we will touch in a second. But because some of the music of Persona Dancing doesn't quite fit the game well, it is a bit hard to explain, and honestly, this is mostly noticeable in Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight than the other titles. Maybe it's the jazzy tone music? Another small problem with the music is quantity. Although each game has about 25 songs, which adds to about 75, this is without any DLC, of course. 
the number sounds great, but it is separated over three separate games, which is a bit annoying not being able to just scroll through all the songs. Individually, I think they have an okay amount of different music to choose from, but you will see a few repeat songs here and there with a few different remixes. Regarding the bass game, a couple of things to keep note of as well. Because of the fast pace of some songs, I did find the user interface become a bit muddled at times and hard to keep track of, but that may be something that just requires longer practice. And at very few, and I want to reiterate few, times the background animation did become a bit overbearing on screen alongside all else that was going on. Otherwise, the game is pretty tight when it comes to the basic mechanics. The music itself is the star of the show. Regardless of the quantity, the quality here is very high. Persona is well known for its memorable soundtracks that are often a bit cooler, edgier, funkier than your average JRPG. And that translates well here for the most part. Personally, 3 and 4 have the strongest selections of songs to fit this brand of rhythm dancing persona. Once again, the music is excellent. There is just some songs that I did not have as much fun playing to. That said, I do want to mention my favorite tracks from the games. From Persona 3, I enjoyed Battle Hymn of the Soul and Our Moment. From Persona 4, Best Friends, and from Persona 5, Beneath the Mask. Let us know your favorite songs from the game below in the comments as well. The aesthetic of this game is on point. As expected from the Persona series, the game is extremely stylish and brings back its beautiful character models and location designs. However, that is why it is slightly disappointing a game like this does not have extra content. Because Persona games always manage to make simple things like navigating through a menu exciting, and there's just honestly not much to see here. Also, a problem particular to Persona 3 and Persona 5 is unfortunately the lackluster amount of variation background scenes. 90% of character interactions will be over at the Velvet Room, and seeing characters interact over the same background image gets a bit drab. Persona 4's visual Nova mode does get a bit more variety, um, so I'm gonna give that one a little bit of a break on this. The characters look pretty great for the most part when they are dancing on screen, though there are a few moments of very awkward looking dance moves. The game definitely makes that up by having different clothes and accessories for your characters that really makes them stand out. Two varying degrees of success. Uh, and then there are some that are downright questionable. There is nothing wrong with skin exposure, but I do want to point out most characters in this game are high schoolers and underage, so... yikes. Anyways, it's not an overwhelming amount of cosmetics, but it is definitely a welcome feature. To those of you rhythm game savvy, you'll find yourselves right at home with Persona Dancing Endless Night Collection. If you're a Persona fan, you will love the character interactions and little comedic bits, even though it's fairly fluff material. If you're not a Persona fan, you'll find the story mode to be too dependent on the source material to make sense, but honestly no one should be going into this expecting to find deep lore here. Type mechanics, however, do make Persona Dancing a fun spin-off entry for the franchise. Both beginner and advanced players will find something they love here. Score modifiers do help with replayability and longevity, along with a higher difficulty unlocked after meeting some requirements. I do want to point out VR mode is available, however we did not have a chance to check it out ourselves, even though it did look kind of neat. And so we come to the conclusion where we let you know, is it Rookie Arcade approved? And this time we're gonna say yeah, uh, Persona Dancing is a good rhythm game, but not a good Persona game. And that goes for all three games in the collection. However. If you are looking for some casual fun, this might be worth checking out, and I'm sure you'll find yourself humming a lot of these songs to yourself hours after you've turned it off. Once again, thank you so much guys, this has been awesome. I'm Rockin' Wolf, you can follow me on social media at Rockin' Wolf, and follow our channel on Instagram at Rookie Arcade. Please stay safe out there, and we will see you soon.